Hey there, welcome to Top Brass. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about job opportunities. In the next few months, there are thousands of graduates who's going to join the unemployment line. What are their chances of getting employed? And what are the employers actually looking for? We invited a very significant and important guest because he's not only the People Management Association of the Philippines' current president, but he's been in the industry for so long in the marketplace, he knows what he's talking about when it comes to job opportunities. Please welcome in the show, Mr. Jerry Plana. Hi, sir. Thank you again for joining us. Pag-usapan natin yan, what are the opportunities that are present right now for graduates in the workplace? Uh, because we know that a lot of them are graduating college in the next few months because people are still transitioning from the, the old system and the new system. But we also have senior high students. They're also graduating. What's your perspective about the, the fresh graduates entering the workforce? Well, I think it's, yeah, as you say, Boris, it's job hunting time again. Uh, this is the period where a lot of these graduates are going to look for jobs. I think it's very important for them to know what companies are looking for when, whenever they hire somebody uh, for their organizations. And the short of it is really they're really looking for two things. One is the technical skills, uh, which you were trained for, like if you're hiring an accountant, mm -hmm. you better be good in accounting, you know, you get uh, some testing there. But I think the other portion that's seldom talked about is the soft skills. It's the skills that uh, will make people succeed being an accountant or being an engineer. And based on a PMAP research we did a few years back, there were a few uh, skills that are necessary on, on that side like communication skills, creativity, critical thinking, and collaboration came out as, as top, as top uh, non-technical skills being required by many of the organizations. So I guess uh, when, when students want to really enhance their employability, I think they really need to take a serious look at that side of, of the equation as well. And I would say that uh, there is really a lot of experience they can draw from student activities where collaboration and creativity and critical thinking can really be, can really be uh, enhanced. The only, the only problem is sometimes you don't see this in their CVs. It's not, it's not found in their CVs. I think my advice right now is to, to capitalize on those and, and put them in their CVs. Okay, let's break it down into, into bite-sized pieces. And what you said is really substantial. I like what you said that there's technical skills and there's soft skills. So, what are you saying, Jerry? Because the, the reason why the K-12 was implemented is that so that senior high students can actually start looking for jobs. That's why there are strands, right? So, they can be experts or they could already have that uh, sort of technical skills. But are you also saying that that's not necessarily enough? So, because they need more? Yes. Because there's, a, there's such a thing as technical fit, but there's also such a thing as culture fit. Okay. And a lot of the culture fit things is, is where the soft, soft skills come in, really. Like one of the, one of the reasons why perhaps uh, somebody will not be happy in an organization is because it's not culturally fit. Okay. You might be the best technically fit, but you will not last in that organization. Of course, when we hire somebody in organizations, we want that person to last there for a long period of time, to stay for a long period of time. It's not enough to be competent in terms of your technical and knowledge. That's right. It, you have to be culturally fit. And, and what are the soft skills that you mentioned again? Communication. Communication, creativity, critical thinking, collaboration. Collaboration okay. is very important. Can, can people work in a team, in a team setting? So can we safely say that those are the universal yes. soft skills that employers that's are right. looking but, for? That's right. That's kind of common, but from company to company, they might have a few, few other soft skills that they will, they will need uh, that will be very unique to them. Okay. And then you were saying that those are not necessarily established in the CVs or the resume you know, of these kids. That's right. When they graduate, that's they don't right. really express it, that's right? right. I think, I think the, the, the tip here is to make your CV more, more outstanding by, by including what the companies are looking for, both technical and, and soft skills. Okay. So if you can write or rewrite your CV in that way, 
I think it will enhance your, your chances of being really considered for employment. So that's a good advice. So basically, like if like my daughter just finished senior high. That's right. So other than her academic qualifications and her background and the skills that she has, you probably need to specify True. the extracurricular activities. That's right. That's right. Her involvements in that's the right. community. And how okay. this has developed her collaboration skills, her critical thinking skills, her creative thinking okay. skills. Okay. So it's practically um, enumerating how they are skilled or equipped in that's those right. areas. So that's for right. example, I could say, uh, I've joined in an NGO called So and So, and that's, that's right. my collaboration skill. That's right. I've wrote some articles for the newsletter, that and that's my communication skills. That's right. Something like that. Yes, okay. I'll give an example. For mm -hmm. instance, uh, you are part of a student activity. You can you can write in your CV how many creative ideas you've introduced. Let's say in the news, new, newsletter writing, for instance. So that will probably express, wow, this, this person is really truly creative. You know. So that's that's the kind of. That's the kind of build-up that you need in the, in the soft side. It's not all about technical skills. Technical skills, yes, that's important, but it's not enough to succeed in organizations. And that's most likely what would cut you oh, yes. above the rest. That's right. right. Everybody, uh, playing fields that all of you have graduated, all of you have academic uh, know-how, and you have all these skills, but not necessarily the soft skills you're talking about. That's right. That could be the differentiator Okay. that will make you stand out or not. And in the long run, it would also help them survive the workplace. Is oh, that yes. what you're saying? Oh, definitely. This, these are the very skills that will get you promoted, mm -hmm. <laughs> that will um, make you progress in your career even. Uh, more, than, more than your competence. Oh, yes, de definitely. Because as you rise into the organization, you know, the emphasis is more on the soft skills rather than technical skills. Mm -hmm. Because that's where leadership comes in, really. That's the, that's the starting point of leadership, isn't it? These things that you know how to collaborate, you, you can be creative. You can communicate and be critical. Wonderful. Aside from that, Jerry, what else are the employers looking for right now uh, in hiring people? Well, attitude. They, they, we always hear this uh, statement, we hire for attitude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, attitude is, is, is a positive outlook. You know, a, go, a, a, a person who is who's always uh, ready to do things. I think uh, related to that attitude is the ability to learn more and more in this very uh, you know, volatile environment. I think one of the characteristics that some organizations look for is the capacity to learn. Is this a fast learner? Is this a person willing to learn, you know, uh, new things? You know, I think that's that's a very important, you know, consideration as well. So attitude and the willingness to learn. That's right. I, I like that. I I won't mention the company, but I remember that there's this particular CEO who did not hire a particular executive simply because he felt that the executive was too perfect. He was saying to the executive. Uh, I would rather get an imperfect executive than hire somebody so ready. Who's to willing to learn. Yeah. Yeah. But who's willing to learn. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. So that's right. That's a very good point. What else? That's, that's right. Is there that's anything else important? I think those are basic entry level mm -hmm. things, you know. Uh, uh, you know, your academics in terms of the technical is there, you have the, your grades there really. But I think the differentiator will be this. I reflect that in the CV, prepare for your interview. Uh, prepare to expound on this in during the interview because a lot of those questions will be basically on on the soft skills, especially if you're talking to HR. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's the line managers who will test you a little on your technical skills. You know, like your accountancy. Do you know your accountancy or your engineering? But when you go to HR, you know, usually these are the things that HR asks during the interview. Good, and you should know. I mean, you're you're an HR specialist yourself. You, how long have you been doing HR work? No, okay. uh, I couldn't remember anyone. Anyway. It was a long time ago, <laughs> Boris. Yes. And now you're, you're actually giving advice to other companies. That's right. I mean, I'm a, I'm a mentor now. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm one of the beneficiaries yeah, of yeah, that yeah, mentorship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerry, now, why don't we mentor or give advice to the fresh graduates? Um, and before you do that, you know that it's an inverted funnel, right? I mean, it's a funnel, it's an inverted pyramid. So even if they have those soft skills that you mentioned, competition is still tough. Okay. So you narrow it, okay. it narrows down. What advice can you give to the graduates out there who doesn't make the cut, for example? You have to be differentiated. You have to differentiate yourself. And one way to differentiate yourself is when you're targeting a company that you want to apply for, get to know something about that company. Okay, you can, you can search in the web, you know. Get to know, like, what's their vision, what's their mission. Uh, you know, uh, whatever information you can get. 
And then when you get into the interview, get to know yourself more, you know, what, what, what strengths do you have? What, what you're really good at? Am I a patient person? Am I a pleasant person? Whatever that is, you connect the two. Mm. And this can be a good conversation that you can make in the interview. You know, uh, if you have this vision of uh, create, uh, you know, getting more market share and having more customers, my being pleasant and my being patient will be an asset to you because that is how we can win more more customers for your company. You know, that kind of conversation catches the attention of employers. So dis uh, distinguish yourself or have those distinctives. That's right, that's Differentiate right. Differentiate yourself. Differentiate yourself by getting to know a little bit more about the company you're applying for and knowing yourself and connect the two. Okay, I, I love that. So. Uh, Differentiate yourself in terms of the soft skills that you mentioned a while ago, but also differentiate, differentiate yourself based on how much you know, the awareness that you know, not just on yourself, but the company that you are applying That's right. Remember, a company is buying or is getting people who can do something for them. Mm. But if that's the kind of conversation you have in the interview, then I think you have a, a big plus factor. You know, you can say something, I know your company is uh, priority is customer service and I know myself to be good in this and this is what I can do for you if you hire me. Wonderful. Well, there you have it. Unless you have any other words to, to encourage them with. I think, to go job hunting. I think this, this, this few basics, if they can do this very well, can really enhance their, their chances of, of getting a job. I believe so. Well, thank you so much, Jerry. There you have it. I hope those tips are helpful for you when it comes to seeking out the company that you want to be part of. Happy job hunting. Thank you for joining us.